for Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lameni. Joining me today is researcher and political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his latest column titled Drive the Crooks and Incompetence Out of Government. So is it correct to say that our government has no plan? Is that not an exaggeration? Well, you know, there's a lot of documents and nothing seems to come of them. When they said that there's a new energy plan, it was really the same as before. And uh, they don't seem to be tackling the infrastructure, the collapse of the pipes for water all over the country, roads. I mean, the way roads have collapsed in recent years is something we've never seen before. There was one road going to the north, I think, near to Limpopo. And there was a huge hole. And if anyone went in there, they would be finished. And I just have a sense that they may come up with a piece of paper, but it's not a plan. And the evidence for that statement is in the fact that key elements of the crisis of healthcare, of power, of water, of a whole lot of other things, education, remain as before. Every year we have a crisis at the beginning of the university year. Every second day at schools there's violence or someone killed on the school ground or near the school ground. And one gets a sense that people are not applying themselves to the work, which is to develop a policy and implement policy in your jobs. Uh, not your self-implemented, but to have professional staff do so. That's another problem in that very often the people who are paid to do the job are not doing the job and they hire consultants. I mean, the president has just had some donation from business to hire consultants to do work that ought to be done by the government. Now, in some ways, one has more confidence in what business may uh, set about doing, and they are paying a very high price for that. But really, what you're doing is increasing the situation where government is not skilled. They are not doing the job they paid to do. And in your article, Professor, you also refer to the Democratic Alliance and Allies also succumbing to corruption in various cases. And there seems to be a lot of instability now in, in municipal government. But having said that, the ANC has now revived attempts uh, to control metros with the EFF and Patriotic Alliance also coming up out. They have come back in Johannesburg recently via an al Jama mayor, Tapelo Ahmad. Is this simply now a front for the ANC EFFDA? And do you think uh, this is telling us something about our future coalitions? Well, it does seem that they're not coming up front and saying that we are coming back into power because the bulk of the votes for the mayor of Johannesburg, all but I think one, I think they only have one member or two members, this uh, Al Jamar. Um, and they didn't put their own person forward. They put this man forward and he seems to be doing what they want to do. They have removed a whole lot of people from before, not just MM MMCs and things like that. A number of people who were removed for corruption have been brought back without the hearings having been heard. And it seems to me that it bodes very badly for the possibility of, of clean government in the areas that EFF and ANC, with PA now controlling. You know, I don't want to suggest that you can't go to jail for stealing and not be rehabilitated. But it does seem to me that the PA is, whether they've been in jail or not been in jail, they are like the ANC and EFF. They've got a little tendency towards irregularity and criminality. So that I think... Instead of coming up front and saying, we are ruling, they put this guy there as a front and he is doing what they want because you can look 
the MMC for finance who yesterday said they're going to lose money if people usurp the functions of ESCOM. That guy is Morero, I think his surname is. He was the mayor for a short while from the ANC. So he's got a key position. Finance is the key, is probably the most important position besides being mayor. But in this case, the mayor is probably not important. Mm. And now you also say that the African National Congress cannot be tasked uh, with remedying the failures of the state to function adequately because you say that uh, they've brought us to this mess that the country finds itself in. Who can now undertake that task? Well, when I write in the media, people sometimes write very nasty comments after what I've written. It's not on polity, but when it gets reprinted in Daily Maverick, they say terrible things about me. But uh, when they're not saying terrible things, they say, just vote them out. This is the time to vote in the DA or vote in this one. Now, I don't think we must have a reflex action because it's very clear that the DA and other smaller parties had an opportunity over the last four or five years with the ANC losing municipal government elected since 2016, it's five years, they've had the opportunity to make municipal government work and they failed. And it's not simply that they don't have good policies or something like that, but they don't really have a way of coordinating as a unity between the minority parties. They all want certain positions and things like that. Now, in any case, I don't think that these other parties speak a language that is meaningful for the majority of the population who are poor, without facilities. The DA in particular has a constituency which is mainly white middle class and is mainly concerned with regaining that constituency which has lost ground to uh, the FF plus and action is a, and my belief is we need to bring in players from outside, not necessarily as political parties, but as a force to show their power. You know, when you're in government and business breathes down your neck, business has got a lot of power. You've seen now they've come in to help Cyril Ramaphosa. They were just able to put 100 million down just like that. And if they decide to take away 100 million, they also exercise power. So there's power that can be exerted by pushing the government of the day, not just by business, but also by mass organizations, professionals, uh, by a number of other organized forces, religious forces, but it may be that they can be part of a combination of forces that could fight elections for clean government and things like that. I'm a little bit wary of using the phrase clean government because in uh, Africa at the time of coups d'etat, they still are coups d'etat, but when there were lots of coups in the uh, 1960s, they would always say they've come in to have clean government, then they'd steal, but with the benefit of guns as well. But I do think we have to be open to the idea of a new combination of forces taking the reins of the government. Archbishop Mahoba refers to a new struggle, not being specific about how it should manifest itself, but new leaders, ethical leaders, things like that. And lastly, now, why are you so cynical, Professor, about a cabinet reshuffle? Should these people not be given a chance. You know, it was a waste of time. Basically, what has happened, a few new people have been brought in, young people. It's not clear what their qualities are. Already one of them being possibly charged with fraud for the degrees that she got at Fort Hare University, Longkolo, Kivit. And in the case of many of the others who remained, Mahrobo, for example, was named in the Zondo Commission, carrying money for Zuma, things like that. He's never been charged yet. Uh, Zizi Kodwa got these huge donations, which are unexplained, about six, seven years ago, 
some sort of loan, no terms as to when he must pay it back. There are others with question marks after their names. And it doesn't seem to worry the president that these people have question marks. Some of them are in his own ranks. Some of them come from the Zuma era and hold high positions. And I don't see any reason for optimism in relation to who has been appointed. And I was not I was not looking forward to the reshuffle. I think we need complete reconfiguration of government, as I was saying in relation to the previous question. You need a fresh approach, not uh, shuffling the decks of people. Thank you, Professor. There was a researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna, in conversation with Polity discussing drive the crooks and incompetence out of government.